A week of transformation. Stepping into Shalom House. Ben Harvey, a seasoned journalist known for his sharp wit and unflinching reporting, embarked on a journey unlike any other. He would spend a week immersed in the world of Shalom House, Australia's most controversial drug rehabilitation centre. His mission to understand the lives behind the headlines, to witness the struggles and triumphs of addiction recovery. He carried with him the stories he'd heard, whispers of a brutal regime, of religious fervor, of broken men remade, but nothing could truly prepare him for the reality that awaited. Shalom House, nestled in the Swan Valley region of Western Australia, stood as a fortress of sorts, a place where the outside world seemed to fade away. Its founder, Peter Lyndon James, a former addict himself, ran the center with an iron fist, preaching a gospel of hard work, discipline, and unwavering faith. Harvey, a self-proclaimed cynic, approached this world with a mixture of curiosity and trepidation. Could this truly be a place of healing? Or was it, as some claimed, a dangerous cult? As Harvey stepped through the gates, he felt a palpable shift. The air buzzed with a nervous energy, a mix of fear and hope that hung heavy over the grounds. He was greeted not with smiles, but with stern faces and a regimented schedule. The men here, he soon learned, were stripped of their identities, their pasts reduced to a number, their days governed by an unyielding routine. This was not a place for the faint of heart. This was Shalom House, where broken men came to face their demons. Harvey, accustomed to the comforts of his life, felt a flicker of unease. He knew he was stepping into a world far removed from his own, a world where pain and redemption walked hand in hand. The week ahead promised to be a grueling test, not only for the residents, but for Harvey himself. He would bear witness to their struggles, their breakdowns, and their moments of fragile hope. The Iron Fist and the Spiritual Heart inside Australia's toughest rehab. The first thing that struck Ben Harvey was the silence. In the outside world, silence was a rare commodity, a fleeting moment between the noise and chaos of everyday life. But here, within the walls of Shalom House, silence was enforced, a tool used to break down the men and mold them anew. Gone were the distractions, the escapes, the numbing agents that had once ruled their lives. Here, there was nowhere to hide, no way to outrun the pain of the past or the uncertainty of the future. The days were long and arduous, beginning before dawn and ending well after the sun had set. The residents, dressed in matching uniforms, moved with a robotic precision, their every action dictated by a strict timetable. Work was not a choice but a necessity, a form of therapy designed to instill discipline and a sense of purpose. They toiled on construction sites, cleaned streets and laboured in the fields, their bodies pushed to their limits, their minds forced to confront the consequences of their past choices. But it wasn't just the physical labour that tested their resolve, it was the emotional and spiritual stripping away that occurred within Shalom House's walls. Prayer meetings were held multiple times a day, the air thick with pleas for forgiveness, for strength, for deliverance. The men were encouraged to confront their deepest fears, their shame, their guilt, to lay bare their souls before God and each other. Tears flowed freely, anger flared, and moments of profound vulnerability punctuated the rigid routine. Harvey, observing from the sidelines, felt a growing sense of unease. The intensity of the program was undeniable, the commitment of the staff unwavering, but a question lingered in his mind. Was this true rehabilitation, or was it a form of indoctrination? The line between tough love and psychological manipulation seemed blurred, the power dynamics within the community unsettling. Harvey knew he had to delve deeper, to understand the motivations behind the methods, to hear the stories of the men who had surrendered themselves to this unorthodox path to recovery. Day one, stripped bare and reborn. The intake process at Shalom House was designed to be a baptism of sorts. 
a symbolic stripping away of the old life and a rebirth into a world of strict adherence and spiritual awakening. For Ben Harvey, witnessing this transformation firsthand was both fascinating and unsettling. He watched as new arrivals, their faces etched with a mixture of fear and defiance, were ushered through the doors, their belongings confiscated, their identities replaced with numbers. The air crackled with a palpable tension as the men, some barely more than boys, were barked at, their every move scrutinized. They were stripped of their clothes, their bodies inspected for signs of drug use or self-harm. Their hair, often a symbol of individuality and rebellion, was shorn close to the scalp, a physical manifestation of their surrender to Shalom House's authority. It was a process designed to humiliate, to break down any remnants of ego or resistance. Harvey, observing this ritual, couldn't help but feel a surge of empathy for these men. Many of them arrived broken, their lives ravaged by addiction, their families torn apart, their hope hanging by a thread. They came seeking solace, a lifeline in a sea of despair, and found themselves thrust into a world of harsh realities and even harsher consequences. As the day wore on, Harvey witnessed the initial shock give way to a grudging acceptance. The new recruits, stripped of their former lives, were now numbers in a system, cogs in a well-oiled machine. They were assigned chores, their days regimented down to the minute. They were told what to eat, when to sleep, how to pray. It was a jarring transition, a complete dismantling of their former selves, but for some, it was a necessary evil, a chance to rebuild their lives from the ground up. The Relentless Routine Work, Prayer and Confrontation The rhythm of life at Shalom House was relentless, a carefully orchestrated symphony of work, prayer and emotional confrontation. Days began before dawn, the residents jolted awake by the sound of a bell, their bodies aching, their minds still foggy from sleep. There was no time for lingering, no space for self-indulgence. Every moment was accounted for, every action dictated by the unyielding schedule. Work was not merely a means to an end. It was considered a form of therapy, a way to instill discipline, responsibility, and a sense of purpose. The men labored on construction sites, their muscles burning, their hands calloused. They cleaned streets, picked up trash, and tended to the grounds, their movements mechanical, their faces etched with a mixture of fatigue and determination. Idleness was the enemy, a breeding ground for temptation and doubt. Prayer was the other pillar of the Shalom House program, a constant thread woven throughout the fabric of their days. Multiple times a day, the men gathered, their voices rising in unison as they recited scripture, confessed their sins and pleaded for strength. The air crackled with a raw emotional intensity, a mix of desperation and hope. For some, it was a source of comfort, a lifeline to a higher power. For others, it was a test of faith, a struggle to reconcile their past actions with the teachings of their newfound beliefs. And then there were the confrontations, the raw, unfiltered encounters that lay at the heart of Shalom House's controversial approach. In group therapy sessions, the men were forced to confront their demons, to unpack the trauma, the pain, the guilt that had fueled their addictions. Tears flowed freely, anger erupted, and accusations flew across the room. It was a brutal process, but for some, it was a necessary catharsis, a way to break free from the chains of